Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Friday 9th, February 2024 and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group, CDB pumps millions into youth economy in St. Lucia. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. The Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, and the government of St. Lucia officially launched the Youth Economy Agency Caribbean Development Bank project at the Sandals Halcyon on Tuesday. The CDB has injected $7.6 million towards the project, which is poised to make a lasting impact on the lives of more than 3,000 young individuals. Zane Romulus of the DBS News World reports. The Youth Economy Agency Caribbean Development Bank project was approved in July 2023 and aims to support young entrepreneurs in building their capacity and investing in their businesses. Moreover, it aims to promote economic empowerment among the youth. $20.5 million will be allocated by the CDB to fuel the Youth Economy Agency, yay! These funds will help an additional 3,000 young St. Lucians to get the support they need to turn their talents, skills, and hobbies into viable business ventures. So this vision, which was birthed in Prime Minister Pierre's brain several years ago, was brought to life. And the young people of St. Lucia can now, are now feeling it, they can touch it, and they can grasp it. The young people of St. Lucia can now use this opportunity to transform not only their own lives, the lives of persons in the community, but also the entire economic landscape of St. Lucia. I wish to applaud the CDB for buying wholeheartedly into this vision with the significant loan support on very, very concessionary terms, as well as the support in the form of grant financing which CDB has provided. The CEO of the Youth Economy Agency, Brian Vidal, has high hopes for the project and anticipates substantial personal development among the organization's clients. Now, from March 2023 to December 2023, um, we have received a total of 1,206 applicants. Um, and they would have applied for grant funding. We also received um, applications for loans. It's about 270 applications. Unfortunately, we have not disbursed any loans at the moment, but that is one thing we'll be doing um, shortly. In terms of the grants, we receive an average about 120 applications monthly. And to date, we have disbursed um, 449 grants to the value of about 1.5 million EC. So let us please give you know, a year round of applause. The ultimate goal is to reduce youth unemployment and enhance social resilience. Chief of the CDB's Division for Social Sector, Dr. Martin Baptist, highlighted that this is a historic moment that demonstrates the bank's commitment to the future of St. Lucia's youth. I remember when we were preparing this project, and Dr. George, you remember, we, we were saying that if the St. Lucia government has asked us to support YE, we dare not say nay. Remember that? And we said we absolutely see the value in this and the visionary uh, construction of what now is a viable development solution, looking at empowering our young people. Because for us, we understand that this is not a favor that the government of St. Lucia with the CDB is doing for the young people. This is a solemn obligation uh, to the generations that are here that assures that our communities, our countries, our civilization would move beyond the historic difficulties of the past 
and ensure that we are able to thrive. This launch reinforces the strengthened partnership between the CDB and St. Lucia since January 2023, with initiatives and agreements exceeding $63 million U.S. million in loans and grant funding. For the DBS Newsworld, I am Zin Romglas. No political ploy. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness says government's business must continue in spite of the announcement of local government elections. Jamila Maitland of, of TVJ News explains. In the coming days, Jamaicans should expect an increase in political activities as the two major parties gear up for local government elections. During this time, however, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government's business must continue. Almost every week. I am out either breaking ground for some important infrastructure, opening a road, breaking ground for a hospital, turning on a water supply, or handing over houses under our new social housing program. Now, we are in the midst of a local government campaign, but the work of the government must continue. On Friday, Mr. Holness handed over three social houses and commissioned a water supply in Eden District, Moko, in north-central Clarendon. But he sought to dismiss criticisms that the events were disguised as political ploys. Some of you, not all of you, but some of you may be thinking, oh, this is politics, or this is part of an election campaign. And to be fair and to be truthful about this, Of course it is. An election campaign is a legitimate part of our democracy. This, however, is not one of those events. Because your member of parliament has been lobbying for a very long time to get water to your district. The Prime Minister did use the opportunity, however, to take a jab at the opposition while Jamaica Labour Party supporters egged him on with cheers and laughter. They have been promised in some instances. Commitments were made. I know of cases where pipes have even been brought and never connected. That is not how this administration operates. When we make the commitment to deliver, we will deliver. Jamila Maitland... TVJ News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. The Department of State has issued a new travel advisory for both Jamaica and the Bahamas, urging Americans to reconsider travel due to a recent rise in violent crimes, including armed robberies, sexual assault and homicides on the islands. More in this NBC News item. Tonight, two of the most beautiful destinations in the Caribbean, now clouded by a stark warning from the U.S. government amid a rise in violent crime. The State Department bumping up the advisory level from two to three in Jamaica, urging Americans to reconsider travel there and updating a level two advisory in the Bahamas, telling tourists to exercise extreme caution. Those security alerts are response to reports of violent crime on the islands. 65 murders in Jamaica and 18 murders in the Bahamas reported since January 1st of 2024. The U.S. Embassy in Jamaica warning of home invasions, armed robberies, sexual assaults and homicides, detailing that sexual assaults occur frequently, even at the all-inclusive resorts, and that local police do not respond effectively to serious incidents. In light of these startling numbers, the island's police force increasing patrols and adding officers. We exceed 1,200 police officers joining the force per year which of course now means that we are, we are actually growing the force. Jamaica's National Police pointing out the number of homicides have actually dropped by nearly 20% compared to January of last year. And the U.S. Embassy in the Bahamas alerting visitors that murders have occurred at all hours, including in broad daylight in the streets, pointing to retaliatory gang violence as the primary motive. The persistent cycle of violence and crime 
as being a dark cloud over our nation. But the Bahamas foreign minister still encouraging travelers to visit, saying in part, while we acknowledge that states have a right to inform their citizens traveling abroad about potential risks, we do not believe that there is any elevated or increased security risk to tourists traveling to the Bahamas. Is there any practical advice you can give to tourists that are still planning to go to these locations? The main thing that we always talk about is, is to maintain situational awareness. Folks are buried in their phone. They're not paying attention to their surroundings. They are posing for their pictures that they post on Instagram and social media, and that makes them an easy target. Cherie McAlpine, a San Francisco resident who has been traveling to the Bahamas with her family for years, is heeding the increased warnings. Because I spent so much time in the Bahamas, the moment the alert came out, friends and family start to ping my email and my text messages with uh, notice that the alert had, had come out and asking me what my plans were with regards to the Bahamas but still plans to visit the Bahamas in the coming weeks. I will absolutely be more vigilant. I will be more precautious about the places that I'll go. I'll go to well-lit areas. I won't go to places alone. And I will probably limit my time in Nassau and spend more time in the outer, outer islands. And it's important to keep in mind when it comes to the Bahamas that a level two advisory is the same that the Department of State has given to places like France, the United Kingdom, and Italy, all destinations frequently visited by Americans who, of course, take the necessary precautions. And now for a regional roundup with Tiana Cool of HGP Nightly News out of Guyana. The landslide re-election of El Salvador President Nayib Bukele was chaired by supporters of his gang crackdown. But as worried opponents who fear the country is sliding into a de facto one-party state. The tallying of the vote was still ongoing on Monday, but Bukele had appeared to deliver a crushing victory with a backing of around 83 percent of voters. The president said his New Ideas party was on course to back 58 posts in a 60-seat Congress, although only 5 percent of votes had been counted. The results grant the carry unprecedented control of the Assembly, where the last term he used his party's supermajority to reshape institutions and pack the courts. Once a tribunal let him seek re-election, despite a constitutional ban on consecutive terms. In his victory speech on Sunday night, Bukele said the opposition had been, quote-unquote, pulverized on the back of his popular anti-gang crackdown and emphasized that his victory was as a result of free vote. Panama's top court rejected former President Ricardo Martinelli's appeal to annul a nearly 11-year prison sentence. But the ex-leader remained defiant and insisted he remains a candidate in the May presidential election. Martinelli uploaded a video to social media shortly after the court's ruling, was made public in the unprecedented legal and political drama, announcing he will launch his presidential run on Saturday. Panama's constitution bans anyone sentenced to a prison term of five years or more from serving as president. All the authorities have yet to issue a statement on the legal status of a possible run for president this year. Last year, Martinelli, a supermarket magnate turned politician, was sentenced to a 128 month prison term for money laundering in a case that centered on claims that a public fund were used by a media conglomerate, which in turn gave him a majority stake. Martinelli was president of the Central American nation from 2009 to 2014. I am Tiana Cole. I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more. In association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. (laughs) 